everyone, welcome to Connected. My name is Fabiana Espinosa. I am very happy to have you here. We are going to be using these 30 minutes to be connecting with people from all over the world. We are going to meet friends. We are going to find out what are they doing, what are they thinking, what new trends are coming up in their lives. Some of them are going to just share with us some of their lives, some of their days, and some others are going to teach us and some others, why not, are going to even inspire us. The whole reason of the show is to have the moment to connect with other people and be able to bring together a new group of friends and a new group of people that are interesting and interesting to learn. I want to tell you that we are going to be uh, meeting each other every Saturday night. Also remind you that you not only see us through our Abby Ayala channel, but you can also follow us through Facebook, Twitter, and our channel in YouTube. to have you here today I am in Santa Cruz Bolivia South America today in our show we are going to travel all the way to London in London we are going to pick up our guest Mr. Karim who is gonna tell us about the biggest event that happens every year in Iraq he's gonna take us to Iraq and he's going to explain uh, explain to us what us what is about the biggest walk, the biggest gathering of people that happens every year. When I say biggest, biggest crowd of people, I am talking about millions of people. And all of these people, they get together in honor to pay their honors to their leader, Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein was a martyr. He was dead because he was, uh, he was known or he represented the justice, he represented the good, he represented all the good things that people would like to prevent. And through history, he was defeated by a bad monarch, right? There were people that were, they were known as caliphs. This, this caliph is the leader of the political uh, group of people that doesn't really believe on the spiritual, but do believe in, um, having power over people. So there were these two bands, band, the band of Khalifa, where were the people that wanted to, uh, through, through political ways, wanted to have power over people. And on the other hand, there was Iman Hussein, who represented uh, freedom, who represented the humanitarian rights, who represented justice. So once this martyr was murdered by the Khalifa, this is when this uh, ritual is started and it's being perpetuated for all of these years. So we are going today, we are going to find out how this happens, um, when it happens and why it happens. Stay tuned, don't leave, we're gonna come back with our special guest. Stay connected. Welcome back and thank you for remaining connected with us. As I told you before, we are connected with our dear guest, Dr. Karim, all the way in London. He, is, um, he has studied development psychology in Harvard. Also, he's director of Verita Center for Strategic Studies. And also, he is a political analyst specializing in the Middle East. I am very honored to have him here today, and he's going to give us uh, more, a lot of information and also share with us the experience he had in this beautiful and huge and longest walk that happens once a year, every year. Uh, Mr. Karin, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for the time uh, you're spending with us. Please tell us about the history behind this event. Where, where, where this all begins? Why, this, why do people still repeat this ritual every year? Okay, let me tell you that um, the history of our main day, um, basically in order to tell you that I need to tell you a little bit about Imam Hussein bin Ali. 
He was a 7th century revol- revolutionary leader um, and uh, an imam uh, of the Shia denomination of Islam. <clears throat> he actually made a stand against Yazid bin Muawiyah, who was, how, how would I put it, Yazid was a tyrannical ruler uh, of that time. And uh, he had illegally actually gotten into power and was violating all the basic human rights and dignity of the people. So uh, in order to make himself legitimate, he asked uh, Imam Hussein to, to pay allegiance to him so it would lend credibility to to his crown or to his corrupt rule okay okay uh and uh Iman? let me clarify just really fast so um iman iman was asked to join this tyrant correct correct absolutely correct okay and because he was who he was he was he was a very very um principled man he had moral values he never lied um you know he was he was just salt of the earth person and so uh, when he was asked to join uh, or to pay allegiance uh, to the corrupt rule of yazid he absolutely refused to do so and uh, and uh, you know and this was purely based on his moral values and principles and he was killed by an army of 30,000 people while standing while standing with a small army of 72 people oh okay and that um, that is known as the day of ashura the day of Ashura is the day when Imam Hussein bin Ali was martyred. He was killed in, in the Battle of Karbala. That battle that um, he was actually martyred in was the Battle of Karbala. Hence, you have the walk from Najaf to Karbala for the Arba'in. So in honor of Iman, in honor of the Battle of Karbala, it's why it's the people. That's why people join together and do the walk for forty days. Correct. Perfect. Absolutely right. Okay, and then I wanted to ask you: from that time, let's say, not from that time when everything happened until today, have the way people do this every year has it changed in any way? Is it any different or they continue with the same exact ritual and the same exact step-by-step uh, -step thing they do for the walk? No, it was, it was, I think it was, uh, it started uh, with, uh, with a, a, a gentleman called, uh, if I'm, if I'm not wrong, it's, it started with uh, a gentleman called Jabir ibn Abdullah and he took a walk from Medina in Saudi Arabia and arrived in Karbala on the 40th day and since then uh, it has it has grown from there and it has never stopped even though uh, during during the the rule of Saddam Hussein in in Iraq um, because as we all know, Saddam Hussein did not belong to the Shia denomination, so he did not like what was happening. And so he stopped people, he actually beheaded them, he killed them. Um, he also, yeah, and they also put uh, different signs in, in the roads so that would, you know, that would lead people to a different road and by the time uh, they arrive in Karbala, it would be past the 40 days. So they tried everything within their power to do that. And it has failed and it has just grown in size um, from um, that time to almost 21 million people now. 
So 21 million people come, get gather together every day to pay their honors to Imam Hussein. They walk, they make the walk. It is an 80 kilometer walk from Najaf to Karbala. Now, let me explain to you a little bit about Najaf. Najaf uh, is a city where um, Imam Hussein's father, um, Imam Ali, the first Imam of, of the Shia Islam, was actually, that is his town. He was, he was martyred there. Um, so, and he ran all his, his business, all his uh, uh, stuff from, from Najaf. Basically, so he, the walk comes from Najaf. So everybody arrives in Najaf and then they, w they make the 80 kilometer walk all the way to Karbala. So only when you reach that city, you start counting the 40 days. Correct. No, 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 no. Uh, basically, this walk would take about two days or three days, but uh, they keep they keep uh, sort of uh, they keep about 10 days in which to complete that walk. So people do come there about the 30th day. And then they start walking from there. Okay, wow. And then I wanted to say then, every, um, the really reason that move people to do this every year, it's all about faith and all about honoring Iman. And Iman, it's a symbol for justice. It's a symbol for, um, for the people, right? People just, people continue to believe in him. Yes. See, this is, this is, you know, and in, in order to, to actually understand that, um, let me, let me give you a little bit about history. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, marching from Najaf to Karbala is usually done in the last days leading to the Arba'in, which is the 40th day of Imam Hussein's martyrdom, right? So this is ba ba basically unmatched and unprecedented gathering of human beings in the history of mankind. Now, this is actually eight times bigger than the size of the annual pilgrimage of Hajj in Mecca. Only to think about it's difficult to have a, like, a, a visual idea because it's so, so many people. Exactly, eight times bigger. But you know, the good part is that um, there, there is absolutely no violence. There is nothing. This, uh, these are all people who are just walking all the way to Karbala to honor Imam Hussein. That's, that's basically it. You know how you hear about people going to Hajj and 2,000, 3,000 people killed in stampedes, um, you know, and that happens every year. Nothing like that happens here. That's exactly what I want to tell you, because when you say and when you think about so many people in the same place doing the same thing with the same objective, like the same thing in your head, I am sure that several things happen among them. So I'm curious about what do, what do they do? How people act that, uh, during that time? What are the rituals? What are the things that are used to, to practice at the moment? Because here they're all motivated by love. They're motivated by compassion. They're motivated by faith. So all of these uh, emotions, how do people, um, how do people project them when they find themselves with I don't know, millions and millions of them walking together. How do they um, communicate among themselves? It is, it is, it is absolutely, that is a great question. That really is a great question. Now, let me, let me tell you, Iraq is a country that lacks many basic security standards and, and living conditions. And specifically in the holy cities of Najaf and Karbala, which have a capacity to take Half a, half a million people at best. They play host to 20 million plus people who cover the roads leading to Karbala. This in itself is nothing short of impossible because you, when you witness the magnanimity um, 
you know you start believing in miracles and this is this is nothing short of a miracle when you when you see how this thing happens you know uh, the western media has boycotted this epic uh, because i call it an epic because it is an epic um and they don't want to to show what is going on over there because they really don't want people to see the real face of islam because what they're portraying in 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 the mainstream media they want people to have uh, that image in their mind that islam is a religion of the negative image because in order to these people to make this event happen over and over and all these people need to be fed all these people need to rest i mean there are several needs that in order to make it happen they get they need to get together and become a strength correct and that i think it's probably the beauty of these people yeah because you know they say that iraqis will work the whole year they will work the whole year and and save money so that they can they can actually feed people for our bain and they will use all their money uh, just a, uh, uh, sorry to cut you a question about this there isn't there are no companies or any um i mean big companies that are behind this are they or it's just the people that really get together and they like organize themselves and cook and share or are there any companies that are behind and i don't know no they they are actually no there. companies these are just individual people and it's just and the people. you know the beauty and the beauty of it is these are just not muslim people alone this you have wow. you have christians in there you have everybody in there who are partaking in this and they will cook um you know let me give you a really really simple example when you start walking and your feet get tired at some point and somebody welcomes you for a for a cup of tea and gives you a chair to sit down and if you sit down before you know somebody is actually sitting at your feet they have taken your shoes off and they're giving you a foot massage <laughs> is this yes. true yes wow. this is absolutely 100% true there are people who have sewing machines there are people who have shoe repair there are people who give right. tea you have little children as as young as 2 years old standing with tissue papers along the entire way so that if if you know because it is hot and when it is hot and you start sweating they pass you right. a tissue so you can you can wipe it you know you know you can wipe your sweat which is incredible right. it's you know, really what it sounds anything. the concept the concept of community it sounds like we we use community on this part of the world so easily right it's you think about your neighborhood you think about you know community but when it comes to these big numbers and to see how much they can they make happen it really yeah. sounds like the real concept of community getting together going further with the fourth question i would like you to please from your experience and from everything you know about it and everything you have seen what would you think mm -hmm. is the social relevance about this um about this event uh, coming in a way of thinking nationally and internationally because on this part of the of the world we really don't hear about this like you said before Correct. right is we don't really Correct. get to know the rituals and all the power of the people when they get together so how do what do you think will be the relevance of this event well you know um, the thing is that regardless regardless of what inter international media says because i know that local media covers that on an everyday basis they will interview people they will talk to people there shows there there you know they they there's child care there's everything um you know but in in terms of international um media people need to understand that the way the iraqis behave socially within their country mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. is is actually the way Islam is supposed to be. That is the real face of Islam that they will not show to anybody. You know, and socially right. now, the so, you know, now social media is starting to come out and they've come out with some fantastic pictures and and uh, incredible video footage um, showing everything, you know, and, and people are starting to take a little bit of more notice um, to the to to the point that uh, the Time magazine did a piece on it. Uh, oh, wow. but finally, <laughs> yeah, yeah, finally. But you know, it is too little as yet. People need to see that this is not a religion of um, violence. It isn't. It is just you know, it is just a religion of peace. This is this is community, love, faith. That's what it's all about. Correct. It isn't. It isn't about killing each other, you know. And and exactly. and another mis and another misconception that people have is from the word jihad. You know, when they talk about jihad, the first thing that comes to your mind is swords and killing somebody. But it's not that. Unfortunately, it's true. It is true. Yeah, yeah, it is. But in actual fact, jihad means. A war with yourself, a war to purify yourself, not go and kill somebody. So they've oh, taken wow. that word and completely twisted it around, and um, you know, and so now it is commonly used in 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 every place in the world. Jihad is like, oh my God, they're gonna come up with this word and kill me, but it's nothing to do with that. So it has just been taken out of context in every possible way that you can you can uh, think of to create confusion because really exactly. it's very uh, what you just said about the pa- the war we have among ourselves in between the, as a human being which is completely normal right because we have exactly. our uh, darkness and our lightness is completely normal and it's something that we all should be should work on correct yeah, because wherever there is good, there is evil, always. Correct. You know, that is that is the way of the world. And so you have to fight that evil within yourself to cleanse yourself or to purify yourself so that you can, be, you can become a better person. Uh, that doesn't mean that you have to pick up a sword and kill someone, you know? Com- co- correct. Mr. Karen, I'm going to ask you to, uh, we're going to go on a cut and we'll come back with a last question for you. Please wait, no stay connected. Everyone we will be right back with more with our special guest, Mr. Karen. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. I'm still with our special guest. I am having a great time. And the most important thing I think about all the information we heard today, it's how our eyes can, how much they can open every time we meet somebody, every time we have time to connect with somebody that brings us another reality. Sometimes we, f- we think that by reading the newspaper or watching TV or even social media, the whole information is there, but not really. So, Mr. Karim, I'm so happy to have you on the show today, and I'm gonna go ahead with the last question. I wanna ask you, Having the experience to uh, participate and to be there, present on the on the walk, um, how much, how did this change your your life? How this uh, having this activity or having this experience influenced you? And also, how many times are is this the one time that you've been there? Yes, this was my first time, and it was absolutely, absolutely amazing. It was amazing because I did not, you know, we hear about this on, um, you know, we read about this in the newspapers or probably see a little bit uh, of a glimpse on television, but you cannot even fathom to start to explain it until you have actually been there. Um, right. You know, the amount of generosity that, that, that the people of Iraq show to 20 million people from all around the world is second to none. I have not seen that kind of generosity anywhere in this world. From the moment you step into Najaf and they know you have come there for the Arbain walk, you are fed, you are clothed, 
you you know you there is nothing that they will not do for you there is washing machines on the road they will give you an extra pair of clothes you can change in so they they can wash your clothes your clothes. dry them iron yeah. them and give them back to you now when wow. when people go to that length of generosity it's a miracle it really is in this day and age you don't see that stuff you know and and another thing that that absolutely uh, amazed me was the beautiful story of imam hussein the way it was actually told and i think your viewers are going to enjoy this if i tell them it is a very short story but it is it it makes it it kind of ties everything together for you okay um, you know there is there is actually not enough words to to describe his sacrifice but imam hussein was the second son of fatima and uh, imam ali ibn abi talib hussein was actually born on 626 AD after the death of Jesus Christ peace peace be upon him um and when he was born prophet muhammad peace be upon him was given the news of his birth and um he was the second grandson so he arrived at his daughter's house at fatima's house he took the little baby in his arms and recited the first and the last prayer call you know because there are five prayer calls in islam <clears throat> so after that people saw tears in his eyes uh so his daughter actually asked him what was the reason for his tears and he simply replied that her son is going to achieve martyrdom he's going to be killed but he also oh. consoled her yeah but he also consoled her by telling her that god will create a nation which will mourn him till the day of judgment wow so that That's... that is exactly what is happening you know and so this is this is this is arbain this is what it's all about and um, you know he and even when he was martyred at the last moment when he was killed he forgave the person who killed him He that's exactly what he represents to people and I believe that that why people just will always perpetuate him because that's what we need to perpetuate in ourselves correct yeah. if we yes, have exactly. the battle between the darkness and light we're always going to find the symbol or the the one that taught us the right way i mean the yeah. the most um pure of the emotions and of the feelings right Exactly, exactly. And you know, um you can you can just not help but marvel the generosity of every the generosity that every pilgrim receives when they when they arrive there. Um this we work all year just to be able to feed people and and clothe them and you know, and it takes your breath away the the amount uh, right. of generosity that that you see there. And um you know, it's and it could it cannot be measured i don't think so but iraq has has been the world's most generous to strangers according to a new global index of charitable giving and i think rightly so because you know and they are retaining the values of hospitality from their ancestors and uh, you know they display the generosity they don't ask for anything in return actually they beg you to come have a sip of their tea come. while you're walking So, you know, I think it it's the practice. I'm sorry to cut you, but I think it's the practice of the giving without expecting anything. Just giving, exactly, giving exactly. with a uh, with love and giving with uh, compassion and just you know just by giving the act without expecting anything back. And that that's something that the world, I mean, all the different societies and all the different um, countries that we know, it's. We see it low, less and less every time. Yeah, it is it is it is incredible it is incredible, you know. It is it is also a chance for for uh, 
you know, non-Shiites or Sunnis and Christians and all other denominations in the world. Uh, it's it's a chance to show people that Iraq is really not that divided as as they make it out to be in 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 the uh, mainstream media, because mm-hmm. this massive show of devotion includes everyone. And through the world's eyes, you know, the the gesture may be in in incomprehensible, but the, the question tapping into why they put so much effort into serving complete strangers, um, and why do they what do they gain from such contributions to to mass march towards Karbala, you know, arises when news reports cover this annual event. But um, you know, many give many look at giving as an act of worship and they recompense it not worldly but rather take the form of good acts compiled in the book of deeds because when you look at when you look at the bible and when you look at the quran they say pretty much the same things you know and and uh, so it is it is an act of worship when they give people they worship and that that makes yes. it just absolutely amazing. Mr. Karim, thank you so much for sharing with us. It's really for me it was uh, a beautiful experience just listening to your experience and listening to what you have to tell us. It's really a message, a strong message that we all needed to hear. Thank you so much. We all here in Bolivia Thank you for your time and hopefully one day we can meet and we can stay connected. Thank you so much for being in the show. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Fabiana. Thank you. Bye bye. Don't go anywhere. We will be back. Stay connected. again Mr. Karin for being with us today and for sharing such a beautiful experience. I want to leave you everyone with the thought about the things we reflected today, right? Um, It's very simple for us and sometimes it's just the way we have, we know how to live and it's finding the difference between uh, people, finding the difference between this country and that country or this continent or that other continent. Um, I feel like The biggest uh, challenge that we have and our biggest strength is to find out what are the things that make us stronger as a human, right? As a human being. And basically when all humans get to, uh, all all beings get together with the same thought or with the same emotion or the same feeling about something, then is when we get really strong. And after listening to all of the the examples that Mr. Karin gave it to us, for instance, saying that after a peregrination of, I don't know, three, four days of walking, you reach a place and somebody with nothing bad in their heads, they just come to help you, to feed you, to rub your feet so you can continue to do what you're doing just to pay your honors to a person that represents freedom. I think that that's very inspirational. And I want you guys to know that having this space, having this show, it's it's what we want to do. We want to build um, a community, right? And we want to have bring this type of, types of feelings and thoughts. And I want to leave you with that. I want you to take the time and think, well, maybe it's not the same. We don't dress the same. We don't speak the same language. But yes, we believe on the same things. And we, 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 we aim the same uh, values, right? Because on, the, on this part of the world, Catholics and other different religions, they also have their leaders. And they're also always finding, uh, wanting they beg for justice, for love, for health, right? We have the faith. So I think that coming together and becoming strong and together is when we accept that we are not so different, maybe. I want to remind you that I'm gonna see you here next Saturday with a new topic. And also that you can follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, and on our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to be connected next Saturday here with me. Thanks again.